Hello, this is MC, the accountant shares, and this is the fifth edition or session for installment sales. So it's going to be all about trading. So that's why it's trading time. And also, this is second to the last edition of this particular session. The last part would have the inclusion of summaries and so on. Anyway, for trade-ins, this is the situation wherein an old merchandise or an old product, especially good because it is, has to be tangible, is being part of the item that is part of basically down payment. So if we say down payment, we normally think of just cash. Now, if there is an old merchandise, for example, a car, and then the buyer wants to buy another car. So that old car can be used as a down payment in addition to cash or in addition to some other fees like reservation fees, which may be part of the whole value of the property or not, depending on the contract. What is clear is that trade-in is normally a down payment. For some, perhaps no more cash down payment, only the trade-in value in which that could happen in problems. However, normally in real life, there's reservation fee, there is down payment in cash, there's also trading. But the effect of trading is that it will decrease whatever the selling price and therefore decreases the receivable that has to be paid over the credit period. So let's now have our discussions on our source. This is still Milan's book, Zeus Vernon Milan, which you can purchase from the author or from his publishing. I'm not selling, by the way, his books. I'm not connected with him. I'm just using his particular material for the sake of appreciating accounting more and so that I can share to more people. Anyway, trade-ins would involve situations that the sellers would accept merchandise as part of down payment. So just like the repossessed merchandise or the repossessions, it's going to be recorded at fair value. In the absence of fair value, it has to be recorded at the estimated value. So please refer to our discussions once again about repositions. If you can recall, I discussed to you in the previous edition that the repossessed, I mean repossessed merchandise or the repositions would be recorded also at the fair value or appraised value or market value before reconditioning costs so that if the fair value or appraised value or market value given is after reconditioning costs meaning that is after we recondition so that the asset will be ready for its intended use and that is the sale of inventory the asset here is inventory and so that's going to be deducted if after so that we'll get the fair value before reconditioning costs, and that is our fair value at that particular date. So here the date is the date of trade-in, not reposition, because this is all about again trade-ins. So just replace the word reposition with trade-in. Also, remember there are two inventory systems. So we have periodic inventory system and perpetual inventory system. If we are using periodic inventory system, remember for repositions, we're going to record the inventory or asset as repossessed merchandise. For this case, trade-ins, we're going to debit traded in merchandise. So one word traded, then another word in, and then merchandise. But if perpetual inventory system, which is being used here in advanced financial accounting and reporting, in higher accounting levels. So we are going to make use of perpetual inventory system and the account title would be merchandise inventory dash or hyphen trade ins. All right, trade ins has hyphen so or dash. And so traded in may have dash or some not, so not necessarily very strict about it. Anyhow, Hopefully that's clear in number one. Number two is that the seller normally allows a value for the merchandise to be traded in. So that's 
quote as trade-in value. Some books would be using allowed trade-in value. Now, the trade-in value may not necessarily be the same as the fair value because the fair value is the actual value of your merchandise at a particular date of the trade-in. So it's going to be the current value, but the trade-in value may not be the same. Otherwise, perhaps the seller is really updated with fair values of merchandise if they're equal. But normally they are not. So that's why number three, there would be an additional consideration that we have to take note. The formula is that allow trading value or trading value minus the fair value. And remember again, the fair value is given in the problem. In real life, it's not going to be given. We really have to know in the market or based on the trade. And in the absence of that fair value, there's no established market. So we have to estimate the market value based on the formula here. So estimated selling price, less reconditioning costs, and the normal profit margin. And I repeat, normal profit margin is the gross profit rate at the resale. So meaning the specific traded in merchandise is now reconditioned or has been reconditioned and is now ready to be sold. And in fact, it is for some situations already sold, but here estimated to be resold. So in that case, we are going to use the normal profit margin charge at that resale, not on the time that such merchandise was originally sold. Just like repossessed merchandise or repositions that we are going to make use of the normal profit margin or the gross profit rate at the time of resale. Okay, so much for that. Again, the formula is allowed trading value less fair value. And then if the difference between the allowed trading value and fair value is positive, we call that over allowance, meaning the allowance given and the estimated trade in value of the seller is higher than its actual fair value. Therefore, that will be treated as a minus because it overstates the selling price. Therefore, there should be a reduction to get the adjusted selling price. And letter B, the trade in value is less than fair value. So in this situation, meaning there is under allowance. If we are going to assign numbers, for example, if the trading value is 100 and the fair value is 80, so there is a difference of 20, meaning the trading value is greater than its actual value of 80. Therefore, we have to reduce its price. On the other hand, still the same trading value of 100, but the fair value is 130, so there is 30 under allowance. So we have to add that back because it means that our selling price is understated. So meaning we are lacking with the sale. So if we are not going to adjust, there would be loss on our end. All right. So here is an example for the trade-ins. So we are given here the cost and then selling price and the down payment for the old equipment is 5000 We assume that 5,000 is trading value equal to fair value, therefore no over allowance or under allowance. And 7,000 collections. Requirement is compute realized gross profit. Remember the realized gross profit again is collections multiplied by the gross profit rate. So here no over allowance, therefore no adjustment to sales. And then what would be the entry? So debit the uh, inventory that is traded in at 5,000 and then the difference between the original selling price and the trade in merchandise of 5,000 is 15,000 the receivable. So this is the amount that will be collected over time for credit period. Now the receivable here is computed so no adjustment on the selling price because there is no over or under allowance and we have your gross profit 8,000. So gross profit rate is 40%. That is 8,000 over 20,000. So to compute the realized gross profit, since trade bid in merchandise is part of collections, therefore it should be part of our total collection. So this is 
on top of the installment AR collections. If there's cash down payment in the problem, we'll also include that as part of our collections. So basically, there are three sources of collections if we now have trade-ins. Number one is down payment, which is cash. Second is the fair value of the traded in merchandise. Take note, I use the word fair value, not the trade-in value. It should be the actual value of the merchandise traded in and the collections coming from the installment accounts receivable. So 12,000 times 40% is 4,800. Okay, so that's the realized gross profit. Next, what about if the trade-in value is more? So in this case, we are having over allowance. Even if without the problem showing us, we would know because trade-in value's complete word is allowed trade-in value. So the original word is allowance, meaning this is higher, so over allowance. 7,000 versus 5,000 actual value so there is 2000 over allowance and this is going to be treated as an adjustment to sales price so when we journalize this method is like compounding the effect of over allowance for some books it's going to be two entries one for inventory traded in at 5000 Another for installment accounts receivable at 15,000 and then installment sale at, for example, 20,000. So another entry would be we are going to deduct the installment sales. So installment sales has to be adjusted. So installment sale then would become 18,000 because of the adjustment. So what would be the entry? So debit over allowance on trade in, which is at 2,000 and then that should be partnered with the receivable. So the receivable has to be adjusted. Installment account receivable at hmm, 2000. If this is like the entry that is to be made, then it's going to be compounded into one. All right, so 20,000 minus 2000, that's 18,000 adjusted installment sales. All right, so it depends upon what particular book that we're using but then it's going to have the same impact over all. All right. So you have here, or we have here, the installment sales price at 20,000, trading value of 7,000. So the receivable is at 13,000. And then we have to adjust our selling price to become 18,000. Cost of sales the same, gross profit is now 6,000. Gross profit rate is 6,000 divided by 18,000, that's 33 and one third percent, or 33.3333 dot 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 percent. Now, if ever you have here this situation like repeating decimal, then we have to make use of the entire ratio. So what about the realized gross profit? That would be, so what I said, actual fair value of merchandise, which is 5,000, and the collections at 7,000, so 12,000, still at 12,000, but the gross profit rate changed. That is at 4,000, okay? So this is another situation. If you can notice, still the collections remain the same at 12,000, just to highlight. And this is going to be true though with case number three. All right, so we have here same problem, but the trade-in value is up to five. So since the trade-in value is lesser than fair value, there is under allowance of 2,500, which is to be added back or which will be considered as a plus to installment sale. That's why we credited it to installment sale, 2,500. 
and the receivable is at 17,500. Okay, so 20,000 minus 25, 17,500. Then the gross profit rate is at 20,000. Under allowance is to be added because again, our installment selling price or sales price is lacking or understated by that amount. So 22,500 adjusted price, less cost of sale 12,000 equals 10,500. And therefore, the gross profit rate is at 46.67%. And then for realized gross profit, if you can notice it's still at 12,000 because it should be the fair value still of the traded in merchandise at 5,000 and 12,000 to be multiplied by gross profit rate, 46.67% equals realized gross profit of 5,600. Okay, so clearly what is shown here is that the gross profit rates would be different, but the collections would remain the same. Now, an additional point for consideration here, let's go back to getting the installment balance of the receivable. If we are using the original installment selling price at 20,000, meaning unadjusted, we are going to deduct the trading value to get the balance of the receivable. However, if we are using, for example, here the adjusted selling price at 18,000, it should be we are going to pair it with the fair value because the actual fair value is the adjusted one. So 18,000 minus the 5,000, where is that? 5,000, even in the problem, 5,000 fair value of the merchandise, right? So that's going to be equal to 13,000. So still at 13,000, should we like to know the balance of the receivables here? So 18,000 minus 5,000 equals 13,000. Let's check with under allowance. The selling price that is unadjusted paired with trading value to get the installment balance of the receivable. But if you use the adjusted, which is the sum of 20,000 original plus the under allowance, 25, that's 22,500, minus the fair value of the traded in merchandise or inventory of 5,000 equals 17,500. So whether we use the unadjusted or adjusted, the balance of the receivable would be the same. It's just that we should pair one with the appropriate other. If one is the selling price in common sales, the partner should be trade in value if unadjusted. If adjusted, then the partner would be the actual fair value. I hope that is clear. All right, so that is for normal trade ins. What if there is a trade in error? So, probably on reporting of transaction here. Requirement is complete realized gross profit. Anyhow, let's look at the additional information. ABC company erroneously did not record an inventory received as trade-in. The appraised value is 5,000. The related installment sale and AR were recorded at their appropriate amounts. So what could be the situation here? Probably did not record, meaning no entry was made to debit the traded in merchandise at its fair value. So the entry would be the installment sales and the receivable. Okay, so what should be the appropriate entry? We have 5,000, then installment sale is at 20,000, then What else? We have to compute our under or over allowance. So we have here 5,000 appraised value less from the allowed trade-in value. Question though is where is the allowed trade-in value? Anyway. We have 
17,500. Let's plot first on the journal entry. So 17,500. Therefore, the under allowance is 2,500. So the formula here, as shown, is like the journal entry form. But if you are fond of making or showing formulas, probably you can also work around with the formula. Okay, so we have here installment sales under allowance. Then you have here the computation for cost of goods sold or sales. Zero because this is the first year after the first year of operations. Then we also have purchases, 25,000, traded in merchandise as given in the problem. So total 30,000. Take note that repossessed merchandise and traded in merchandise are considered as part of goods available for sale. There are basically items, for example, repossessed, obtained again, which are obtained back or got back by the seller or us sellers. Then trading in merchandise, our customers are using or making them as part of down payments for the said acquisitions of our inventories. Again, we're sellers here, we assume. So therefore, they're a part of goods that are available for sale, just like purchases. Less the inventory new to five. The 5,000 is not included as inventory. Therefore, it's not part of the count here, the count for inventory of new merchandise. So that's 22,500. We did that, we get the gross profit and we can compute the gross profit rate. Okay, that's 43.75%. And then, if we are going to compute further, that is realized gross profit as computed. Adjusted installment sales, 40,000 here. Then, installment sales is given. The under allowance is squeezed here. So, it's the balancing figure. And then, we can also determine actually the allowed trading value before I proceed. Remember, it's 25, the under allowance. 5,000 is the fair value. So the formula is allowed trading value, that's X, minus the fair value of 5,000 equals under allowance of 25. And 25 is what? That is negative. If positive, that's over allowance, so negative. Should we simplify? Therefore, the allowed trading value is 25. 25 minus 5,000 is negative 2,500. So that's also an important point. If the result is positive, that's over allowance. If negative, under allowance. Okay. So here, and then that's 43.75%. So 40,000 adjusted installment sales, that's here. Installment receivable is at 20,000. That's also given. Therefore, the total collection is 20,000 and you have the gross profit rate. 43.75% resulting to realized gross profit of 8,750. Okay, so that's how we compute. What's the important thing here is that we should know that we can work around with formulas. We can also make use of the computation of the gross profit to be able to get the rate. Then we also have to take note of plus would be over allowance if negative under allowance. However, to compute for the adjusted installment sales, over allowance would be deducted and under allowance would be added back. Okay, so those are the important things about trade-ins. Hopefully, you learned something today, guys, with respect to our discussions. And I'll see you next time for the last part of this series. Bye for now.